have Frankie here. Studio? I am here in Los Angeles, yes. I am in the small office in my studio um, here in the Arts District of Los Angeles. I'm in the little tiny laboratory. I have a big office out there. That's where our set is and our stage. And then in this little office is where we create all our content, our animation. We have our pipeline engine and in here. So this is like our little brain lab. <laughs> so uh, how did you get started like uh, from street artists? At least uh, like, a, like a notable artwork you have. It's not an NFT because it's stories. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I started, I started like, when I was in middle school, high school, I started getting into street art. Um, I mean, I would always like sketch and stuff, but I started doing like graffiti. I got really inspired by, um, I got really inspired by just like the graffiti culture and, and started painting and doing lettering and, and things like that when I lived in Northern California. And I would actually like mow lawns and buy spray paint. And I, me and my friends in middle school and high school would get paint and like, we would paint under bridges or we'd go to trains or we'd get cardboard boxes and paint on our fences at home and we'd just like make like letters and illustrations and things like that and this was like you know back in 2000 this is like 2000 in the early 2000s in like 2003 in northern california and um i was always really influenced by like kind of like graffiti and street art and it wasn't until I started like understanding what design was, and visual design, and illustration. I got really inspired by artists like Alex Pardee, who's a really good friend of mine now. He he was making comics and he was making um, he had a lot of design work at Tower Records back then. And you know, going down to the Bay Area in San Francisco, I would see Upper Playground, I would see all this art, and it really inspired me. And I kind of, you know, was really driven by that. And I, I ended up going to school and I took a design industry route. So when I went to school, I started doing visual design. Um, and that's where I went to college in San Francisco and um, ended up doing web development and web design. And that kind of like, you know, spilled out into, you know, over the years and years and years as I learned what the difference between design and art and my influence from street art and kind of figured out how to monetize, right? Like, because to me, it was like, I wanted to be able to, I was trying to figure out how to do what I love and make it pay, right? It's off of what I do, you know? So not having to like work a nine to five type of thing. I, I met a lot of uh, the full-time artists. So that exactly what you mean. In create art world, why do you want to do other works? Yeah. Um, so the most important thing is, uh, you, of course, you have to um, brand yourself. People they know. Who mm -hmm. you are. Yeah, um, and you you learn that along the way, right? Yeah. Yeah. As an artist, I came from my background. Um, in street art and design and then i went to college in san francisco and i started working in the tech industry i worked in the gaming industry um i was at zynga in 2012 or 2011 and 12 i started working as a ui designer uh, nice company yeah yeah i worked on a game called dream zoo and worked on other various games on in the mobile department and i had already I had known how to build like applications because that's what I went to college for was building interactive games and working at game studios and working in art studios. And I worked with Pixar artists and, and pipeline production artists and stuff like that. And so I already had a kind of a, a thinking of, of design and interactive in the interactive design field. I started developing iPhone apps in 2011 um this is mostly like out of like college projects but when the app store opened up i started developing apps and i would make art and i would build apps that you could you know i would let you put stickers and things like that on your photos and you know kind of the stuff that snapchat and instagram has today i was doing back way 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 back then um and you know sharing them on social media and 
through my career and my, my history of working in the design industry and being really dedicated to kind of like the technology and web web apps and, and multimedia, I ended up getting into blockchain in about 2017. In 2017, I was working for with a design agency called Neon Roots and a buddy of mine, Drew, he said he had invited me to do a contest to design a wallet for a blockchain company that ICO'd in London called Pillar. And I was like, all right, I know how to build iPhone apps and I know how to do design and I had all this stuff. And so I did that and it kind of injected me into this whole crypto world. Um, and when I was in London in 2017, CryptoKitties had launched. And when I saw CryptoKitties, I was like, oh, whoa, what? And it kind of like blew my mind. I was like, whoa, wait, there's like, there's like cryptocurrency and design mixed together. And so I went through this like whole adventure throughout 2018 and 19. And, um, you know, being a, a visual artist, having background in gaming and all of that stuff, I ended up working with Dapper Labs. So I applied in 2018. Uh, wow. I think I was right. It was when I, I believe I was in Berlin, Germany at ETH Berlin um, when I applied to work at Dapper Labs. And wow. They hired me, and then yeah, I worked with closely with the creative. Chief I creative. know the, the the early investor is actually uh, he, he's also from Taiwan. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, I was, NBA top shop and also yep, 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 yep. Really amazing team, solid guys. I mean, some of the best people I've ever met um, up there in Vancouver, Mac and and those guys, Dieter and and yeah, I I worked. Had a chance to work with them, Roham, and um, did that for about two years. And then I moved back to the United States. I ended up in Vegas and I was working. I was working. Yeah, I was working for Dapper Labs. I was doing a lot of like the prototype development stuff. This was after CryptoKitties had launched. I was still minting art as an artist because, you know, in the NFT space, I was starting to mint, mint stuff. So I met. Uh, known origin and the guys over at super rare and the founders of open sea so like i had met those guys through you know the very early stages um but yeah i started uh you know i was working with with uh with dapper labs i started making art and then i was still kind of doing design industry stuff you know i was still doing ui design and helping projects and when i was at dapper labs i worked on nba top shot I did like the pack design concept work. I did some of the UI. I actually coded some of the web pages. I helped do a lot of the pitch decks for um, the Dr. Seuss project and the UFC and things like that. And then towards the tail end, I was like, oh, I kind of want to like go see what out what's out there. You know, I wanted to go explore. And I was minting artwork on Known Origin and Super Rare. And you know, Whale Shark had like collected some of my pieces. And then I, I got in with Jimmy at NFT42, and that led me into working with Gary V on VFriends. Mm -hmm. So then I worked directly with VFriends or directly with Gary V and um, helped him build VFriends as his big collectible project. So I did the UI design there, helped him design his backgrounds, um, worked with him directly. Gary V is, he's probably one of the most amazing product manager guys I've ever met. He's just, he's very sharp. He, he nails it every single time. His feedback is on point. Um, that experience was, it was a rodeo. It was really, really crazy. And we had like, you know, we had to launch it, I think May, it was like May last year is when the date was, but we worked really, really hard on it and we got it out and then, um, you know, helped him build that up. And then after that, I was like, Hmm, what, do, what am I going to do now? I can make art. And then I saw, you know, Gary V's project kind of like blew up and he had his like NFT explosion and then Bored Apes was out. And, you know, I was in the middle of like, what, what should I do? Should I make art or should I create a project or whatever? And one of my um, co-founders now, who's on my team, he DM'd me and was like, hey, remember that character Subduck you made? And the character Subduck I made was like a couple years ago. It was just like a little character cartoon I drew up. 
And I was like, all right, cool, we'll do it. And so <laughs> we, I drew all the art, we generated the project and then boom. And now all of a sudden I have a company and I'm sub <laughs> Yeah. Adventure. Yeah, congratulations. Here's Subdex for my decks. So this is a generative project um, made up of, I want to say, I don't know, maybe 100, 200 pieces of art. Um, generative. I did a various pack of backgrounds. You can see when you click on each one, oh, okay. um, there's 26 different backgrounds, 49 different clothing sets, eyes, hats, mouths, skins. And then there's one of ones, which are unique um, individual pieces that I had created. And with that, you know, procedurally generated, I was able to complete the collection of 10,001, I believe is what we did, the maximum. Uh, but yeah, all the ducks are, are pretty awesome. It's, it's, it's really fun to, to build and make because when you like draw the eyeballs out, right? Um, you look at it and when they pop on their heads, it, some of them work, some of them don't, some of them look amazing, some of them are good. It's just like, I, I love it. <laughs> uh, this is a meta duck. You ever seen a meta duck? <laughs> no. That's a real duck. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then, and then uh, here's you look at. <laughs> so yeah, the the collection itself is there's there's a lot of a lot of ducks. Yeah. <laughs> but the one the 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 best one is the meta duck. It's, it's a good yeah. duck. <laughs> Me, there's a story. Um, it's a fairy tale. Talk about that. There's only one dog looks different from the other dog. Yeah, he was not a dog. He was a. He was a groove. <laughs> um, yeah, so, oh, there's a Picasso duck, a mm. money duck. Yeah. Meta duck. Yeah. There, these, are, these are the one of ones. There's a golden duck. And then I made a galactic duck, a space duck. Mm. And I made a doodle duck, a guy that's drawn on paper. And I made a Donnie duck because he's got money. And then I made a, uh, my, my buddy, I let him make a duck. Columbo duck, and then I made a cardboard duck, mm -hmm. and then I made a duck made out of bubble gum right here. Nice. Yeah. So those these are the unique one of ones. These are like the, the 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 single editions. But yeah, I thought it was really really funny when I when I made this project. I made the meta duck. It's just like a picture of a duck. Um, a lot of time, uh, they say when people they collide a PFP project, they uh, they think about they also do something else besides change their profile um, photo. Mm -hmm. To let the colliders, they do something like so. The Colombo duck specifically, my my buddy Joey, he was an artist. I've known him for years. Um, he's a really fantastic artist, J. Dot Colombo. Um, he was a buddy of mine. I was like, hey, you want to make a duck? And so we collaborated and made like a, a version of, he, he was able to take my art and make a, a duck, right? So that, that was like our first collaborative piece. Um, beyond that, there's been a few different collaborations. I think like the derivative people, like other artists take my art or they take the ducks and they make a version of their own. We've done some collaborations, partnerships like that. Um, we've, we've done a few of those. I think for the most part, the initial collection oh, here is nice. Yeah, I really like the color. Yeah, they're fun. There's some wacky ones. There's some weirdo, there's some, there's some pretty good ones. I like the ones with the bubble gum. Um, there's the little lava ones. Uh, this guy's cool. Look at that guy. Mm. So yeah, the whole the whole the whole art set collection is really fun to make. I love these characters. Like any other projects or uh, any uh, exhibitions. I'm going to be making a cartoon. 
we're taking subducts and we're creating a cartoon. Wow, uh, that's, I'm really that, looking that's in production right now. It looks amazing, and it's the characters. And I, I voice one of the characters. Um, I'm having my team also voice some of the characters, and it's based off of the story of kind of my adventure of how I got in the industry and where I grew up and what, how I came about. And so it's really, really, really cool and exciting. Um, the The cartoon is going to be the, the big thing that I do for for this for this project. We're still building a lot of unique utility and gaming experiences with the sub ducks uh, coming down the pipeline. Uh, we have enlightenment ducks coming. We have toads. We have a uh, full website redesign. There's a bunch of stuff coming that we're dropping. Um, we also have our set here in LA and our studio and we do our YouTube streams. Let me see. So like on our page, Let's see. Stream. Um, we're making content. Uh, we have skits, and we've started introducing like ways for community to add their characters into our props and our sets. So we have full full production studio. Um, that, yeah, we have our own TV show. It's kind of cool. Yeah, on our YouTube. This was our NFTLA event, um, but we have an entire set. Um, we do a full podcast, we do community updates, and then we also like run commercials and contests and things. And we, 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 we started previewing and demoing our, our animatic um, for the cartoon. So we update the community a lot using YouTube. Um, and yeah, we have a, our full set. Uh, I have a big team here. They're all working really, really hard, and it's a lot of fun. A lot of fun. We had a uh, during NFTLA. We had one of our community mod members, Bread. He came in and hung out with us and brought his little bread puppet over into our set. And so we did a full show with him. We we showed some recaps of the highlights of NFTLA. And yeah, the the streams that we do each week are really, really fun um you know we hang out we talk and we have a full our full production studio here so you know it's it's like it's the real deal the one thing that we're doing here and what i'm primarily focused on is you know we're in la i'm very inspired by tv and hollywood i'm very inspired by you know the cartoons and things that i grew up with and video games and things and i think being based here and being a media company and being involved with technology and having a background in gaming that I'm really pushing to build a really solid brand, um, utilizing Web3 and the ethos of, of blockchain and my deep understanding in, in technology and kind of economics and tokenomics that I'm really trying to build something that will create a lot of value and have, you know, community contribution and, and inspire and, and build up other artists. One of the things that I love to do is work with other people from the community. So bringing people on to come and work with me uh, and teaching and, and dating and helping incubate other projects and teaching, kind of giving my experience out. We can build together is kind of my, my I guess, cheat code. Um, so yeah, so I think like uh, there's there's going to be some exciting stuff. I mean, I, I would say in the next like year or two years, I'm going to do some pretty amazing things. I'm really excited and devoted fully heartily to this project. Yeah. So yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Bye bye. All right. All right. Bye now.